1915 have these two teams contested a league match in that final season before the First World War. Barnsley finished third in Division 2 and Arsenal fifth. Yet when competition resumed, Arsenal, thanks to some rather underhand lobbying by their chairman Sir Henry Norris, were elevated to the top division, where they've stayed ever since, and Barnsley were simply ignored. It's taken the Tykes 82 years to catch up, if indeed they have. That April day, Dennis Bergkamp's grandfather was probably only a twinkle in his great-grandfather's eye. On this occasion that so emphasises the inequalities of life in English football, it's perhaps worth pointing out that the non-flying Dutchman cost twice as much as the entire Barnsley team. After five league defeats in a row, Danny Wilson has swapped around his personnel. Dave Watson is preferred to Lars Laser in goal. Neil Thompson appears for the first time this season. And the South African Eric Tinkler plays as sweeper in the midst of the Premiership's most porous defence. Arsenal, by contrast, are unchanged. Between them, Wright, Bergkamp and Overmars have contributed all but two of the team's 23 goals. Bergkamp, though, like Steve Bold, is only one booking away from a three-match ban. Cynics might suggest Barnsley need divine help on an occasion such as this. Well, they have called on Moses, A.D. Moses, that is, to keep the Red Sea at bay. He'll mark Overmars. Just back from a Cup Winners' Cup assignment in Bucharest, Peter Jones is in charge today. Never mind the likes of over Mars, I'd imagine Barnsley would be over another rather closer galactic object if they managed to avoid defeat here today. But apparently unequal struggles are, after all, the essence of football's appeal. The odds tell their own story, just in terms of today's result. 9-1 to one against Barnsley winning. Arsenal are 9-2 to two on to win this game. But Danny Wilson has upset the odds before. And wouldn't he love to do so again? Dixon. Prejean. Little. Lady Moses. Sheridan. And the outlet is always there in the form of Ian Wright. Tinkler stayed with him so far. Parler. Wright's flick. Just a little too delicate this time. Nelson Wenger's been in charge for a year now at Highbury. so far it would create quite a stir if Barnsley were to take the lead in fact a minor earth tremor might be a more appropriate simile Thompson's free kick Dezeo good save oh, and across the face of goal by Liddell and so nearly turned in by Ashley Ward the earth so very nearly did move Liddell and Winterburn getting the ball stuck beneath his legs just for a moment. Bergkamp, was that out of play? It was, you know, it's a corner. Now this was the moment. Is there nothing that's beyond this man at the moment? The ball seems to obey his every whim. Look at it and savour it, and even if you're from Barnsley, you can't but help applaud it. Sensational goal by Bergkamp. Into double figures for the season. Thompson. Caught a little after the ball had gone. And a good through ball to Bergkamp, only the keeper to beat. Easy as you like. It 
would be grossly unfair to his ten colleagues to suggest that Arsenal are a one-man team, but it would be entirely fair to say that one man is dominating at this moment, and that man is Dutch, he's brilliant, and his name, as if you didn't know it already, is Dennis Bergkamp. 2-0, both to him. It is with him, but it's Ray Parler all the way off the post, and Ian Wright denied as well. There was a question mark as to whether Ian Wright, in fact, on the far side, was offside as the move unfolded. Parler was distinctly unfortunate. Here is Dennis Bergkamp. And here's Ray Parler. And that's 3-0. Bergkamp doesn't just score them, he sets them up as well. That, I fear, is the end of the contest. And it's come prior to half-time. Just a question, really, of whether Parler was ahead of Bergkamp when that final pass was played. The officials were satisfied that everything was in order, and Parler's task was straightforward. Pierre a four to Petit. Right lurking ominously from Barnsley's viewpoint, at least in the middle. Vieira. Little was in the way. Bergkamp. Is that an arm? Apparently not. Platt. David Platt. Deflected! Well, Barnsley really would have known that it wasn't their day had that gone in. Of Eric Tinkler. <laughs> Petit. Platt. Didn't score first time round, but from the set piece, David Platt contributes his first goal of the season to the Arsenal court. Typical of the player, the late arrival, the firm header, and the goal. What's all remarkable is that he was a comparative minnow amidst the giants of the Barnsley defence. Tinkler. Prijan, Christov, Slovenian to a Macedonian, Redford, Nicky Eden, Bullock, Tiseu, all too easily dispossessed by Vieira, and this is Winterburn, and here's Ian Wright, the one thing that's been lacking today is a goal from Ian Wright, the nap hand is complete. Every Ian Wright goal seems to set some sort of record, and it's perhaps worth recording that this is the 300th goal of his club career. again on Cliff Bastin's record number of league goals for the club. 23 to go to equal that.
to Vieira and Winterburn that helped to set it up. Barnsley's defence contributed fully. The right is not the man to present a chance like that to. And that brings to a conclusion a contest that emphasised the inequalities that exist among the elite of English football. After 82 years apart, the gap between the sides, I think, has widened considerably. But there again in 1915, Arsenal couldn't call on anyone with the skills of Dennis Bergkamp, who in the first half particularly was quite breathtaking. It's the biggest win of Arsene Wenger's reign. In fact, it's Arsenal's largest league win for five and a half years. Even David Platt managed to get on the score sheet for the first time this season. And it was a victory every bit as clinical and comprehensive as the score might suggest.